trying to search for that Arteca music. Funny to see you up in the search results at your <laughs> mall. Yeah. <laughs> um, hi there. First of all, hi there. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Arteca too. Uh, they have like one or two bad albums, but the rest solid gold. I like, I don't know, 30 hours of solid good music. And uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, most of the time I'm call uh, I calling myself like Lettero, because this is like really my favorite track. But the other one is second part, Wilbo, which is a partner city of uh, Brighton, Brightingham or London. They even read the history. <laughs> yeah. That's why I thought it would be like a kind of nice meme to call myself that. But I've also seen some other dudes calling himself like lateral or dial. I, I don't know right now. But yeah. All tech stuff is lit. Lit as fuck. <sighs> no, no way to complain about that. And did you find the music video? Especially the first two albums were like, that was my jam, you know? <laughs> I listened to the stuff for years and still do, I think. But, uh, I think, oh yeah, yeah, I just want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, no props. I also have, yeah, those guys, yeah, <laughs> I know how you're feeling. Uh, LSEC wasn't totally my stuff, but uh, the MPS sessions, this newest one, it's totally my stuff once again. Oh, fuck you. And uh, like every big band, kinda, they have a lot of live stuff, and this Cox, really? They just see me there? I don't believe that. Yeah, um, like every big band, like Metallica, for example. They have like 30,000 entries on Discogs for every live session they ever did. Electronic <laughs> um, wait, fuck, fucking forgot to turn on my webcam. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, yeah, uh, I also read about the Electron and how powerful it is in theory, especially for people who want to get away from doors. And uh, yeah, also kind of the interest, but I guess like 1,000 euro, I'd rather uh, save my money for 2,000 euros to get myself a virus access TI, you know, but uh, something, <laughs> yeah, everybody has to decide for himself. Also these uh, Sysex uh, files, I've read about them a couple of times, but I don't really understand their kind of purpose, you know, I'm also I'm trying modular stuff out, but and tracker stuff, but trackers, oh, but modular is way too fucking hard for me. Seriously, man, I feel like a total retard. Everything modular related. <laughs> yeah. Do you also like uh, focus more on hardware or more software? Because I'd say they're quite good. Uh, soft sense out there, a lot of people make jokes about but yeah, I'm quite happy with most of the soft sense so no arguing from me there I've been training on sorts of stuff, I found it on the ground yeah, FL Studio was great for me as well as a beginner because uh, everybody is like uh, Putting FL Studio down, blah blah blah, it's total shit, but I wouldn't say that's true. First of all, they have a lot of great instruments, and second of all, when I used FL Studio, I did like one or two tracks per day. This like, it was like solid workflow. Now with Cubase, I'm a little bit slower, but it's maybe also because I'm a little bit older. And the older you get, you kind of get slower, which is not a good, <laughs> not a good aspect, I think. Yeah. And like back then, I only thought like most of the programs would work like FL Studio. I would like to try my put my electrodes to some use, but unless there's too much hurdles. Yeah. Uh, 
You mean like uh, recording and sampling and just in time? I don't know. Electribe were, were these the ones with the tubes, with the gas for warm analog sound, partial, these partial analog things, uh, drum machines. Some, the one was the blue one, which was kind of a drum machine more or less, and the other one was a red one, which was more of a sampler, if I remember right, or was the Electribe the small one? which combine these three other smalls. Either way, uh, yeah, I also got like the EA one. Let's, let's just look that up because I have no idea. Can I? Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. This shouldn't happen. <laughs> okay, nice. Uh, wait a minute. I also like to know about this stuff. EA one. Oh yeah, I've seen this one before. But uh electrop yeah yeah e R one. I've seen some other ones. Yeah, that's the one which I meant in completely red and blue. And uh I read something about like you have to import the samples with an SD card, which sounds like way too Fuck it, you know, I would lose interest immediately if I heard something like that. But if you can work with that, that's kind of good, yeah. Ah, uh, oh, that's the MK2, the completely red one. That's the MK1, I suppose, then. Yeah. But uh, what was the other one, what you mentioned? Uh, yeah, the Electron has like one drum machine, one sampler. Uh, this was the drum machine. And the Octatrite, this was something else, like the sample, and, and this one was also the newest, I guess. But holy shit, they're quite expensive, but uh, it was quite pricey, yeah. <laughs> These are all way better than what was the other shitty one. This this one meme synthesizer, I bet you know it. Uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> fucking 800 euro for this man <laughs> this is way too fucking overpriced <laughs> I would never spend that much money for for just some simple synth stuff you know <laughs> but some people prefer it I can't really I'd say if I had the money I would surely I would buy it also these calculators they've been putting out but Seriously, man, 800 euro for such a little... <laughs> That's ridiculous. In my kind of opinion, you know. Uh, you know about VCV rack? <sighs> yeah, that's what I love right now, kind of what I'm digging. VCV rack is the shit, honestly. Blah 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 blah, transfer the mount nukes, okay, uh huh, uh huh. Okay. Uh, VCV rack, uh, yeah, uh, did you say, of course, because the, of the VCV rack or the OP1 because of the price? Uh, it's like, uh, wait a minute, I just typed it in. This thing right here, it's kind of a, yeah, it's a freeware program and like a lot of people are developing it on the LP1. Yeah. You can recreate a lot of sounds with the VCV rig and it's especially helpful for learning, which I guess uh, the LP1 is more like end user shit, you know, like basic user stuff. But uh, that's like the next level, kind of, you know, with modular synthesizers. And it's uh, free, because I get like reactor, but I use it almost <laughs> never, <laughs> to be honest. And I feel kind of ashamed, because I have reactor for years now. And then VCV rack appeared, like two or three years ago, and I'm using this most of the time. Yeah, it's really helpful, especially with uh, when you type in like oscillators you get like uh, the learn effect you know it's a lot of optical learning as well this is like uh, programming in C++ you know 
that's how you start and when you do a start doing this stuff and you have like enough knowledge then you have like long black hairs and a big gray beard that's what follows <laughs> yeah i really suggest you try it out some hardcore shit right there oh, very large machinery i never thought i'd talk with somebody online because of music instruments and all that yeah <laughs> Especially nowadays there are a lot of programs which you can get for free or for little price. Some people crack them even. It's ridiculous what happens nowadays. And uh, I'm trying to get somewhat of a grip for all of them. Because uh, it's never wrong if you know all of them. Only limitations I have right now is I have a Windows PC and an Android smartphone, so Linux programs partially are installable on Windows, but the stuff like Logic, I am forced to buy a Mac computer in order to use Logic, or I could try an emulator, but then I still have to buy Logic, which would be 200 euros, but still, you, I'd be running it on an emulator. And I won't say like uh, it wouldn't run smoothly, but I don't like the idea for a program costing me 200 euro for an emulator and when Mac finds out, when, when Apple finds out, they block me or some shit and then I've paid 200 euro for nothing. Yeah. Are you also like mainly working on Windows or Linux or more hardware based or... I know you mentioned the Alec tribe, but other than that, would you say you want to go 100% analog? Because I've read like people want to go there. Actually, I'm running a circle right now. Because <laughs> I was focusing so much <laughs> on the conversation. Okay, we got this. This guy. Okay, let's try this out. Um. Hardware software, yeah. yeah. Um, for me, in theory, software uh, hardware sounds really cool, but even turning on uh, like uh, Atulia Microbrute MK1 and uh, even turning this thing on and waiting 10 minutes until it's warmed up, you know, as an analog synth, way too much trouble for me. I couldn't. Seriously, I'm losing interest in that kind of shit. I know there are digital hardware synths and all that, but still, man, it's the physical space. This like, this pisses me really off. And as a VST kitty, I'm definitely a VST kitty. I just start up a program and load up the synth, and that's it. You know, no space use, what? no. What's that? Pre-warming or shit like that. Who the fuck was that? Okay. <laughs> Finally beating women. Yo. <laughs> All those artists, man. You mean, uh, Um, I don't even know Richard Devine, to be honest. I'm gonna Google that guy. Or do I know him? Wait. This is, uh, what's he, Richard Devine? I've never heard of this guy, to be honest. Trapezoid. Uh huh. Oh, really heavy use of GSP. Oh, okay. So in theory, I should know who this guy is. Somehow, I totally missed it. 
<laughs> kind of sad when I miss out on stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna check some of the stuff out. But nowadays, I don't know, a lot of stuff, a lot of IDM feels like oh, strange drum rhythms. I'm an IDM artist, you know. And I wish I could like get more albums like the first two. Okay, fuck you, it's kind of really hard to aim. Wait, wait, wait. Um, yeah. I just want like more albums like the two first Alteca albums, you know? Oh yeah, I am so lost, it's so under the rug. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm stacking bodies, yo. So the game forces me to beat a lot of women, okay? If that's the case. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Especially nowadays everything is too perfectly mixed. This is also like a big issue. Like you have always this perfect crystal crystal clear sound, no errors whatsoever. Sometimes you need like errors to give like this music a human touch I'd say. You know? I don't holy shit man. Stop mentioning so much stuff for me, you know I have like Couple of terabytes of music I have to listen to. <laughs> this is horrid for me. No Let's see. Uh, this looks a lot like an, like an electronic label. Yeah. I'm gonna check this out. Variants. Well, uh, I know it's a cheap uh, method, but uh, what I like to do is. Uh, Use this. I don't know if you've known or seen this one. Come on, wait. Uh, is this the official site? Oh yeah. Wait, let's just do this. And then, uh, oh yeah, this is the old site. There's like, <laughs> you know this one? Yeah. <laughs> I've used this a couple of times. The Glitch 1 version was kind of cool. And now uh, the Glitch 2 version is not so bad at all as well, but you can only sprinkle it in small doses. This is kind of a problem, you know. But other than that, if you like really uh, complex drum shit, uh, I can suggest Renoise. This is what I'm also like learning right now. It's also like uh, Venetian Snares uses this one, but I'm way too stupid for trackers. But well, in theory. I think that's something Renos would do better, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I'm getting like through all the trackers, Shizen Tracker, I was also want to try out um, LSDJ for uh, a chip tune and all that shit. Uh, yeah, but the far as I've seen it, um, Venetian Snares is like using Renoise only for recording. And I don't understand this because if he only uses Renoise for recording, why not why not just open up Audacity and then just record, you know? Okay, fuck. <laughs> There's a next guy coming up. This is what... Uh, I just wanna like stalk one of these musicians and then watch over their shoulders for like, I don't know, a couple of months until I say, yeah, now I feel ready, like I should do something again. Yeah. Well, do you also have a band camp or something where I could like check out your stuff? Who the fuck has discovered me? Let's see where I can hide. Oh fuck. Fuck man. Probably as well for the ties back to the Amiga. Oh yeah, the Amiga, which would also be interesting. If you like, uh, 
use as well an emulator and then just try out old programs. I tried the Cubase 4 which had the very first VST instrument and uh, even the emulation process was way too straining. That's why I said fuck it, let's just stick with the new stuff. Yeah. Also I don't know if I can really make it open. Oh, okay. But uh, I guess you really should because uh, there's a lot of overthinking. A lot of people think like, yeah, no, nah, it's perfect. And uh, to, be, to be honest, the only time I put stuff out was like when I said, yeah, fuck it. I just do some shit. <laughs> this worked quite well for me. Yeah. But something everybody has to decide for themselves. This. Holy fuck! This is something is everybody has to decide for themselves. It's so fucking hard to aim in this game. Yeah, this happens to everybody. Don't think about how how flawed or perfect it is. Just throw that shit out, man. <laughs> you know? Who but who is even discovering me? I mean is there a camera? Or what the fuck should I do now? Yeah. <laughs> I get detected all the time. Okay. Let's suppose there's a program. Let's just do this then. And I'm gonna hide once again. Fuck man. Okay. Yeah. Soundcloud uh, is also not bad because of the community and all the promotional stuff, you know. But all in all, I guess it's a little bit harder to come through as an artist nowadays. But that really shouldn't bother you. And like, what do you plan to buy next? You mentioned uh, the the electron, right? Is is that your next uh, buying decision, basically? Oh yeah, the upload limits uh, since a couple of years. Uh, I've also reached the limit. And uh, since then, I think this is what I do. I just create a new account and upload shit there. That's how I, I'm gonna do it now. When this account is getting full, creating a new account, creating a new account, and so on and so on. SoundCloud wants it that way, you've got to give him all the stuff that way. So, where is this motion detector? I'm kind of... S this thing right here. No. Who's even seeing me? There's nobody. How, how fucking many times have I been discovered? Yeah. A lot of trash mails, and then just see what sticks and what not. Why the fuck is she running to me? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> With this like uh, username thingy. But it's still not uh, verified that this is really Epic Swim, right? And I'm still also kind of waiting for. Um, Ambient Works Volume 3 and which is kind of strange is like uh, I have songs that sound a little bit like FX Twin the songs and these were like let's say not so good to produce you know not so high value oh yeah oh this was the birthday it was new for me I didn't know that and uh, I didn't know the newest FX Twin stuff feels like he's just throwing out really a lot of trash on purpose just to no annoy people, you know? This is kind of strange, man. I know, since since Window Licker, when you compare his stuff, you know, like Window Licker with all this other stuff, he has some cool analog tracks whatsoever, but all in all, he just uploads a lot of trash on purpose. Which is kind of sad because it has like so much talent, you know. This confuses me, to be honest. 
Have you listened to like what was it uh, analog works or analog bubble bath? This kind of stuff. This is patrol. Off. Return to your position. Because there's a lot of stuff that is like just filler. Okay, I shouldn't be here even. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, Analog series. Yeah, that was the one. I mean, there were a couple of nice ones, but I also know, like, yes, this one small demo album, which is like ambient works also, but it's just more or less a demonstration of um, one cork. Uh, what was the one? Mini log, I think. Wait, let's see this one. What was the one? Yeah, he did a demonstration album for uh, for this one, which had like ten short, funny, ambient tunes. But it was more or less just uh, arpeggiated stuff, and that's it. And then I'm thinking, yeah, is he fucking with us or what's, what's his deal? What's his plan, man? I don't understand this guy at all. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this dude gives me sometimes real headaches. What? Because you really never understand what he's doing, you know? Then a lot of single track uploads. The most expensive one. Oh yeah, that's the one, that's the one which I meant, um, but other than that, seriously, you should like focus on something like uh, Richard David James album, that was quite solid, all the other stuff didn't really suit me well. Did you also get like the interview uh, in which um, Richard David James is like a big Karl-Heinz Stockhausen fan and then he showed Karl-Heinz Stockhausen some uh, songs of him and Karl-Heinz Stockhausen replied something like yeah boring and repetitive and FX1 was kind of pissed because he thought yeah he would really like the track and I personally would like him too but you know Karl-Heinz Stockhausen is like the snobby dude. What you want to do now? Can't do anything about it. I am seriously running around now for 10 minutes or so. What the fuck am I missing? <laughs> what the? Seriously. <laughs> I'm running in circles. Okay, now I got mentioned once more. I always get detected here because I have to do something like this. Or... Somebody shoot through there, but with this shot come from? Uh, I know that um, Kanye sampled uh, Avril 14th for one of his tracks. I don't even know, I'm a big Kanye fan myself to be honest, because he's also like a very funny trashy hip hop artist, has a lot of great humor, but all in all I know Kanye samples way too much and way too long bits. Yeah, April 14th. And I know like, uh, I didn't know about the dispute though. It's kind of interesting to read for later on, I guess. Uh, this dispute. Uh, I just can't try to get one more. <laughs> okay. Nice. Classic with Kanye. <laughs> you gotta be honest though, Kanye is very poor. He lives in this mansion with his wife, who got like some surgical operations which were expensive. Kanye was too proud of his. But I, I 
RC, which is fuck man, I'm so illiterate. Ah, oh, okay, now I remember. So FX Twin offered liked that Kanye could resample it. Also, have you seen like uh, what? What is it? Uh, fuck man, the Antwoord. Like uh, these two South African rappers who also had this one ambient track where Richard David James appears as a black fat guy and he has like this name sign like a clerk. Like a clerk where uh, you can see like, hello, I'm God, you know this one? <laughs> yeah, no problem, I, I should kind of know about this abbreviation because I've read it so many times and I still keep on forgetting. What the hell, man? What the fuck am I missing? I just want to beat this woman up again, you know? That's the only reason why I play this game. Just to beat women. Searching or was it? Ugly boy, yeah. That's the one. <laughs> this is. Yeah, and who sampled your seed? And. Yeah, <laughs> hello, my name is God. <laughs> I love this one. Yeah, no, uh, problem is. You, you gotta see this. I don't know, have you played the portable ops? This is like really shitty in this game. Um, on the left is like my uh, health bar, on the right is my stamina bar. The stamina bar doesn't uh, regulate like in Metal Gear Solid 3 that your health rises up. Uh, the stamina bar just only depletes and then you're dead and it depletes so fucking fast and this is like a small ration when I eat a small ration you see I've eaten one fifteenth I need like eight rations to get half of this full and uh, this has no effect on my health whatsoever this is uh, one of the big minuses of portable ops and a lot of other minor stuff honestly yeah now I'm dead I'm playing this also on a PS3, uh, PSP emulator, that's why I can do stuff like this, you know. <laughs> you can see like how fast the, this health drops and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, it's not the best, but you gotta consider it's for the PSP. Uh, for a PSP game it's quite impressive, for a PS3 game it would be quite shitty. But this is also the only game where Kojima only acted as a producer. Uh, and later on the people said, come on Kojima, let's let's make another one, come on, make another one. And then he said, yeah, okay, I'm gonna do another one. And if you think about it, this dude that made like Metal Gear as a series, as a game series for 28 years, this is quite impressive. Imagine you'd have to do a project like 30 years, man. I bet he has like two years of sc screenwriting that shit, you know, 30 years of the same game series over and over and over again. After some time you feel somewhat exhausted, you know. <laughs> um, the problem is now I have my school, my homeschooling uh, lesson starts in less than 20 minutes. I, I gotta do some preparations. It was nice talking to you. Keep up the shit with Renoise and BCV Rack and whatever. Keep up that shit, man. Then release some stuff L rather sooner than later, I'd say, you know. And... Uh, yeah, maybe I'll be later online, I don't know, in 10 or 12 hours or so. Maybe we'll see each other again. So, have a good one. And bye, dude. Have a nice day. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, as well to you. <laughs> so, bye, dude. Yeah, very nice talking to you too, man. Bye. <laughs>